What if I tell you that you are about to learn end-to-end -end how to stake NFTs or provide staking capabilities to your NFTs for all your buyers and issue your own cryptocurrency to the holders as a reward for staking their NFTs. It's happening and you're about to witness. I am starting a video training journey to teach you how to build the staking farm, a stake, an NFT staking vault, and your NFT holders will earn passive income staking rewards by staking their tokens in the smart contract. Let's do it. We are deploying an NFT staking smart contract, which users that bought our NFTs are gonna be able to deposit those NFTs into a staking vault. We're not only minting a staking contract, we are also minting an ERC staking rewards token. So we are building our own ERC20 token that we will use to pay our buyers, in this case, our stakers, rewards for how long they leave their NFT staked in our vault. So we are configuring an NFT vault, NFT staking vault in which users can deposit their NFTs and we will pay them staking rewards using our own cryptocurrency that we are also going to be building in this video series. Boom. By the way, I got I have to show my 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 t-shirt is it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of awesome. I want to show you guys fungible. It's my second favorite F word. <laughs> There you go, there you go. I'm just flexing on it, it looks sick. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead. So on this video, what I'm going to be doing is we are going to discuss the overview, how everything works from a blockchain smart contract interaction perspective. We're talking about an ERC721 NFT will be deposited into a NFT staking smart contract that is coded using Solidity to issue rewards to the stakers, right? So let's say, you know, you got user A, he bought an NFT out of the collection. Now he wants to earn rewards or passive income on that NFT. How can we do that? We will build an NFT staking smart contract and that smart contract will be attached to an ERC20 token smart contract that the users will receive their staking rewards as a result of staking their tokens or their, their NFTs onto the staking vault that we are going to be building. Now that is something else. Alrighty, let's get started. All right, let's discuss how the NFT staking smart contract works and interacts with the other smart contracts and we are focusing on ERC 721 NFTs but a similar approach can be used to implement this on ERC 1155 okay so let's let's discuss how this whole thing works we will have three smart contracts first smart contract obviously it's our staking smart contract in which the users can deposit their nfts and returns for a rewards token that will be smart contract number two the erc20 smart contract that will issue the staking rewards to the nft staker so we will code another smart contract to issue the tokens. And finally, we got obviously the NFT collection because oh, buyers will need to first acquire or purchase an NFT from the collection, right? So you'll have a normal NFT collection smart contract, ERC721 smart contract that will interact with the staking smart contract, okay? You're following me. Let's discuss how this all fits together and how everything connects and interacts. So the first thing that I want to discuss is action number one or event number one. We got a buyer executing a mint function to the collection. This is a normal NFT purchase action performed by the buyer. He just talks to the ERC721 smart contract and mints an NFT. We did that on the previous videos. You can see that that's a normal NFT purchase. Once that's done, 
the NFT smart contract will issue the buyer its NFT. So let's say buyer number one bought a single NFT, the smart contract will then issue that NFT and deposit that NFT into the buyer's wallet. And that will be token ID number one or whichever the range you coded in the smart contract. Now the buyer got, got an NFT from the collection, right? So once that's done, here's the fun part. The buyer or the owner of that NFT decides to stake that into our NFT staking pool or vault, right? We decided to offer NFT staking rewards. We coded a vault or enable a vault. Then that NFT holder decides to deposit or stake the NFT onto the staking smart contract, right? What is going to happen on the back end? We need to code inside the NFT staking smart contract a verification or basically um, a call to validate that that NFT belongs to the NFT collection that we are intending to provide the staking rewards to the end user or to the buyer because we don't want anyone to <laughs> bring any NFT and start earning rewards. No, no, we want our own NFT collection to be to be the only one that can issue those rewards. If you hold an NFT from our collection, we're gonna give you an, uh, a staking rewards token because of that. And that's how we need to validate that, of, of course, that NFT belongs to our collection. And I basically specify here, staking smart contract verifies that the NFT belongs to the real NFT collection. Of course, we need to make sure that that NFT is part of the collection that we are giving the users the rights to stake, right? Okay, awesome. So that's done, right? So that will be step number two or action number two, stake the token into the staking smart contract. Okay, what happens next? After that, now the NFT has been staked in the vault, which means that the owner is no longer holding the NFT. The NFT has been deposited into the staking smart contract, right? So we are holding the NFT on the smart contract. What is happening because of that? We have an instruction on the smart contract or a function that will basically start calculating the block rewards. The moment the NFT has been staked on the smart contract, on the NFT staking smart contract, the smart contract is going to start calculating the block rewards. Or basically what we do on the smart contract is we code a, a formula that will issue the amount of tokens that we want to provide or we want to grant our end users for staking their NFTs on the pool or on the on the vault, right? We actually code that on the smart contract. So the moment the NFT has been staked or has been deposited onto the staking smart contract, we have a, a code or a, a function that will start calculating the amount of tokens that, that we will provide as a reward to the stakers, or in this case, the uh, NFT owner, the NFT owner. So the moment the owner or the NS NFT owner decides to stake their NFTs onto the vault, we have a smart contract configuration or, uh, or code that will issue the amount of tokens as the reward on every single block that has been processed on the blockchain. So as blocks starts processing on the blockchain, we use that as the interval to start issuing those rewards, right? You have a block that gets processed every 10 minutes, right? Or every five minutes, right? That all depends on the blockchain. That moment, basically what um, allows us to do is to capture that event and then calculate the amount of rewards or the amount of tokens that we are going to give the end user for staking the time during that time frame, that time period, right? So that's configured on the staking smart contract. So once that's done, you know, you leave the NFT for a certain amount of time and we need to decide or we need to configure on the smart contract how much rewards are we giving the end users over a certain period of time. So let's say, you know, every day we want to grant the end user X amount of tokens per NFT stake. That's something we will be configuring on the on the upcoming videos. So you better stick with this one. This is this is amazing. I, I love the fact that you can stake an NFT and it becomes an utility more than just art. It becomes a utility, a way for us to 
provide liquidity onto a project, provide liquidity or provide passive income to our uh, our holders. So that's 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 amazing, right? Okay, NFT has been staked. What's next? Let's go to the next slide. The next slide where basically now we're interacting with the staking smart contract. So let's say we already accumulated X amount of tokens. So the end user accumulated X amount of tokens. They're able to verify the earning. I will be configuring a UI in which the users can look and see how much tokens they have earned or at least uh, rewards they have earned while this, the NFT has been staked on the vault, okay? Once they realize, oh, you know what? I wanna, I wanna claim those, those rewards tokens. So there will be a function on the smart contract that executes that claim. So the end user or the wallet of the NFT holder calls the staking smart contract and says, you know what? I wanna claim the reward. So claiming is one thing. I wanna make sure that you understand. Claiming, it's you're claiming what uh, the earnings have um, have been so far on the staked NFT. That doesn't necessarily mean that I am unstaking the NFT. I can leave the NFT staked, but I can claim as I start earning those rewards, I can claim those tokens to be issued and deposited onto my wallet and the state and the NFT can still stay staked on the vault, okay? So the moment that user decides to claim, hits the claim function on the on the smart contract. Obviously, the end user will not see this. We'll just have a very nice, cool-looking GUI that users can claim rewards. You'll press a button, and what happens on the back end, it talks to the staking smart contract, and then it proceeds to execute the claim function. What will do that claim function? Let's go and take a look at that. When we execute that claim function, against the smart contract, what we have configured or coded in the smart contract, in the staking smart contract, is basically grab what you have been calculating as the block reward and then send a request to the ERC-20 staking rewards token smart contract to mint that amount. The staking smart contract is going to see how much earnings has that NFT accumulated so far from being staked on the vault and it's gonna grab that value and it's gonna go and send the request on behalf of the end user. The end user is not going to interact with the tokens, uh, the rewards token smart contract. It's the staking smart contract. It's going to talk to the other smart contract, which is amazing, right? So the staking smart contract, it's going to send the request to the rewards token ERC20 smart contract and says, hey, I need you to mint 20 rewards token and please send those tokens down to this destination wallet. And it's going to provide the end user's destination wallet as the recipient of the, the, the tokens that have been minted. So in essence, it's sending the request to the staking rewards token smart contract and saying, hey, please proceed to mint this amount of tokens and send that to this particular destination wallet, which is the stakers wallet. Okay, next, let's see what will happen. Now we have the final journey of an NFT staking and uh, token rewards uh, interaction or smart contract interaction, right? The staking smart contract sends the request. Hey, I have X amount of tokens that I need you to mint. It gets that information and it also gets the destination address in which the staking rewards token smart contract needs to send those funds. Now the staking rewards token smart contract will grab the value. Oh yeah, sure. Because the staking smart contract has been configured as a controller. Listen carefully on this one. The staking smart contract, this is the NFT staking smart contract has to be, um, allowed or assigned as a controller of the rewards token smart contract. What does that mean? It means that he's allowed to mint to send requests. It's like an end user who's allowed to mint tokens on the smart contract. The only difference is by doing this mint function with a controller, I cannot allow any end users to call the smart contract directly and mint tokens. This is a strictly a staking rewards token smart contract in which I as a as a as, as a wallet holder I cannot call this smart contract and 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 mint even though that I, I want to pay there's a value per token I cannot do it because I am not allowed to hit the mint function only the controller of that function is allowed to which in this case is a staking smart contract right okay so in a nutshell I send the value how many tokens do I need to mint the smart contract sends not me the smart contract, the staking smart contract, sends the, the amount of tokens that it needs to mint and sends 
that request to the staking rewards token and tells the contract, hey, mint 10 reward tokens and please send that down to the destination wallet, which in this case is the NFT stakers wallet. And there you go. That's the moment where that smart contract mints those tokens and proceeds to send that to the destination wallet, which that value is provided by the staking smart contract, which is amazing. So it's all automated. The end user just hits the claim and then the staking smart contract proceeds to, okay, let me see how many, how many tokens have you earned so far? Oh, you got 10 tokens earned. Perfect. Let me send the request to the staking rewards token smart contract. Boom. Please mint 10 tokens. And I have the destination address that you need to send those tokens to. And then the rewards token proceeds to send those down into the stakers wallet. Boom. This is amazing. Let's talk about what we discussed. Let's summarize everything that we saw in this video. We got three smart contracts. One smart contract is the NFT collection smart contract. That's the smart contract that, you know, will issue NFTs to users who wants to buy an NFT out of our collection. We want to provide our NFT holders a passive income. How can we do that? With a staking smart contract. That's contract number two. We have an NFT staking smart contract that will basically allow the end users to stake their NFTs, to deposit their NFTs into that smart contract and earn reward tokens, okay? And that comes into the contract number three, the smart contract number three, which is the rewards token, the ERC-20 smart, con smart contract, which will basically create a third smart contract that will be used to mint those reward tokens. I always see NFTs to be something much more than just art. With the NFT, you can, with an NFT, you can capture or, or, or bring investors into your platform that can provide a service. So let's say our end users to use those reward tokens to buy other things. If we deploy an NFT marketplace, those reward tokens can be used to acquire more NFTs. So at the end, the end user they had to do was buy an NFT from the collection, stake it, and they will earn unlimited passive income. They can buy other NFTs, which are completely tradable in the OpenSea marketplace or any other known marketplace. It's endless because as long as the NFT is staked in the vault, they will get passive income with the reward tokens, which they can use to buy more NFTs. So they they bought with, they actually bought one main NFT, staked that and earn staking rewards, which they can use to buy more NFTs. I would like to thank you for following me, supporting me, and please, please, if you find my content very valuable, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Everyone that wants to learn about blockchain, and I will do my best to provide you the guidance and knowledge that I have, because I believe that knowledge is power. Nothing can take that away from you. And if you share knowledge, good things will happen. Alrighty? So thank you so much for your support. Please give it a thumbs up if you like this video, and we'll see you in the next video. Let's start working with NFT staking. Let's do it. Bye.